Okay, this is the access road from Weybourne. And when you arrive at the bottom, you've got the uh, Beach Road Pay and Display Car Park. So you've got a ticket machine over there. There's also a toilet over there. And then the car park itself. Now if you get here early enough, there's always a little bit of um, free parking which is on the left hand side as you can see where that car is all the way along here now I tend to park just outside the entrance to the car park because it's still I think questionable whether that is part of their car park but anyway touch wood I've never been charged or had a ticket for parking here and you've got yeah probably about a hundred yards down to the end of the wooden fence there where you can park tight over against the the side no problem at all obviously in the summer this gets very very busy with not only people swimming and beach goers but uh, once the mackerel are in sometimes you get, it's a job to get on this car park it gets very very busy so Anyway, that's the shingle bank. I shall get unloaded, get some gear on, and get over there. Okay, I'm down on the beach now and what I did was from the car park I walked along the top of that ridge there and what I've done today is so I can cover both Weybourne and Kellin I've walked halfway between the two to a mark known as the wreck out there there is a wreck of a ship um, and basically I'd say that's roughly halfway between Weybourne and Kellin. You can just see the cliff sticking out there and the fencing on top. That's Kellin. So it's a little bit further to walk if you want to pleasure fish it. Um, the sea's looking okay. It's roughed up a little bit even since I've got here. A little bit more swell, but perfectly manageable. So what I'm going to do now is get some gear together and get started. Okay, I've finally set up, set up two rods today and what I intend to do is fish one fairly long and the other one closer in as a, like a scratching rod. I've already had a couple of casts to wet the line with, with a no wind at all, they're going out lovely. So today what I've decided to do is pretty much standard stuff. I've got for the longer range rig, I'm going for a pulley panel. And they've got a pair of 1-0 hooks on there. Don't need nothing too big here, I don't think. And on the closer in rig, I'm going for a two hook clip down. And that's fitted with size one hook. So it gives me a chance of the flatties and stuff like that. So baits today, I've got some salted lug, which I had left over from last week. I've obviously got some squid. I've got some fresher blacks in there. And also got a few sand eels and a little bit of fish bait to try as well. So what I intend to do now is get those rods out and I'll tell you a little bit more about Weybourne.
So okay, that's the first two casts out. And what I've done is with the right hand rub with the pulley rig on. That's a sand eel and squid cocktail on the pulley panel. I've whacked that fair way out, probably 100 yards. And with the second rod, the two at clip down, I've put a couple of worm baits on and a worm and squid cocktail on the bottom. And, and, and basically lob that one in a lot shorter, 30 or 40 yards at the most. And we'll see where we go with that. So, location. I'm actually fishing exactly halfway between Weybourne and Kelling. And behind me is the uh, Muckleborough Tank Museum. And believe it or not, a tank has just driven past inside their grounds, obviously warming it up ready for today. They have like a visitor centre there. but So, yeah, what we're talking about here is a steep shelving beach, which means it's ideal for anglers who can't really cast as far as others, shall we say. Beginners, it's, it's ideal because you've got fairly deep water close in and no matter really what time of the tide you get here whether it's low water or high water even at low water you've got enough water to actually fish in so you, you're not so much dependent on tides I mean there is better tides than others personally I like to fish two and a half to three hours up and a couple of hours down Whereas other people prefer to fish either side of the bottom of the tide. So, yeah, so horses for courses. Uh, species wise, we're just coming into the spring, allegedly. And we should be seeing smooth hounds, dogfish, and the, the first run of decent bass. You're going to get all the usual culprits. You're going to get plenty of flatfish here. There's dabs and flounders and the obligatory whiting virtually all the year round you can pick up whiting but bearing in mind what I said earlier about being, the wreck being out there for the real long casters who can get out towards that wreck um, you can pick up codling, pouting and there's all sorts of other sort of exotic species there's been some bream but yes so first two rods out I've already got a little bit of a tap on the left hand rod which is the smaller hooks and closer in possibly going to be a flatfish of some description so I'll give it five minutes and then I'll give it a check get another couple of baits ready to go on I don't normally have a spare rig set up when I'm pleasure fishing I just literally get the baits ready and then rebait them as they come in so yeah we'll see how we go with that give it another five minutes see if we can't get one on the other hook as well here comes the tank going for it so I'm going to get that left hand rod in now and have a look and see what's happening. Not as good than that. Up there working out there. The bottom boat looks like it's been crabbed to bits. So I'm making a few crabs out there today. What I'll do now is quickly give this a fresh up with bait. 
get it back out. And we'll try and keep the baits fairly small on that other rod to encourage the flatties to have a go over. I think if they want it, they'll take it anyway, no matter what. So, yep, let's get this re clipped up and get it back out. fishing short I'm able to cast from the top of this bank it saves a lot of trudging up and down the shingle it can be very tiring on a five or six hour session but as the tide comes in now obviously that little walk gets shorter so that left hand rod's tapping away already Here's the tank going across the top of the track. It's a proper set up track in there where they can do, a, well, I think you can have like a hire a day experience or something to drive them. Um, I think, don't think Greta Thornburg would be too impressed with it though, the amount of junk that's pumping out, but there you go. And as you can see, there's a few more people now starting to plot up. It does get very popular this beach. Um, come June, July and August, as soon as the word at the Macra are in, well it becomes basically a no-go area, you can't get on this beach. They're shoulder to shoulder, literally the whole length as far as you can see. I've sort of been here at um, half past four or five o'clock in the morning to catch an early morning tide for some mackerel and you've been shoulder to shoulder even at that time in the morning. So. It can be very busy. The other thing worth mentioning is that you see, you see the swell, it doesn't look too bad. But every now and again that picks up and you get one or two really big rogue waves and they'll come right up over that next lip if you like. And even recently in a match we were fishing, it was a lot rougher sea than this to be fair at the start. But halfway through the match, around about 9 p.m. ish at night, a massive great wave came in and literally wiped out half a dozen of the anglers' um, gear, the shelters, the boxes, everything tipped over. So you've got to be pr pretty mindful of that. It might look calm, but it could soon blow up. And every now and again, even in these conditions, you will get a rogue wave come up a lot higher than the rest and swamp out your gear. Hence why I've set up right at the very top. It's a little bit further to walk and cast, etc. But it's a little bit safer and it means I haven't got to move everything again later on at high tide. Plan today is to fish the tide right up, which is around about 1pm. And then I'll probably fish it down a couple of hours. Depending on how things are going, we'll see.
quite surprising. That's two casts that to all intents and purposes look like bites, but um, no, they come back, the baits are untouched. So what I've done is just quickly pulled out another two hook flapper, slightly smaller hooks, a size, size six on there, size four, sorry, hooks on them. And just made slightly smaller baits just to see if I can tempt something and I've cast it out even closer really I'm probably 20 yards out if that so we'll give that a little go I'm not really expecting much until a couple of hours before the tides up that's why I say I always like to be two and a half three hours before we're now getting to that point. So we'll just be in a military sort of training area, especially Kelling behind us. We get all sorts of weird and wonderful things. And now we've got a Chinook. Don't know if you can make that out in the gloom, but we've got a Chinook helicopter there. And they often do uh, dummy drops and that into this site behind, into this uh, Muckleborough collection site, once it's all sealed off. So I think we're gonna have a few bits and pieces with that today various military stuff by the looks of it there's also been a lot of um, activity with the rehearsal for the um, coronation fly past that all takes place over this part of the North Sea as well so who knows what we'll be blessed with today an air display chucked in free charge Let's have a look at that left hand rod, it's going mental again. The last two times there's been nothing there but... That was definitely a bite. North Norfolk postage stamp. But we're off the mark. If you can call it that. Little dab, undersize. Loads of them about here at the moment. Let's put them in the bucket. Oh, drop them back in there. Been at that one. Change them a bit more frequently today. Seems to be quite a bit of crab activity. So I've just uh, give the right hand rod another bait change. It'll strip, strip bare the hook. So what I'm going to do is keep an eye on that. Maybe do it a little bit quicker every 10 minutes instead of 15, 20. <coughs> Left hand rod's going again. That's the close in one with small baits and that's potentially another dab so I'll give that a look see what that amounts to
keys in the pod. Nice to see that. Get a few bites. Take it from there, really. Signs again, but a little bit bigger. And that took one of the very, very small worm baits. So I'll put on literally a single frozen black, about an inch and a half long, two inches long max. No tipping or nothing. And that's took that. So let's try that again. Small hook, small baits. Unfortunately, at the moment, it is small fish but we'll take it from there and see what we can do so I'm literally putting a piece on as big as that it's only just bigger than the hook what I'll try on the other hook as way of an experiment is a bit of the salted black the same size this is the salted lug I had left over from Monday night so I literally put it in a container covered it with salt dried it all out and it's gone fairly leathery very similar size bait so we'll get that back out and see what we can do. yards out again it must almost be at the bottom of where this slopes off in theory it would be a natural holding spot but there you go once the summer species are properly in you can get these bass very close in here literally the length of your leader that's going again already that there's quite a few of them there i think it's just trying to sort out one that's sizable not so much today because it's a pleasure session but it'd be nice to have a few that go on the ruler as they say done is just move that rod wrist around a little bit just to see if you can pick up those bites a little bit better on the camera so the left hand rod is basically the top rod and with those small baits and small hooks as soon as it's going out I'm getting fish let's give that another check Yeah, they were stripped bare that time. If they don't get picked up almost straight away, they do get stripped. What I'm going to do, I'll rebake this time with the same size bait, a little bit of worm, but I'm going to put a little bit of squid on there to tip it off as well. So it lasts that little bit longer. Right, just a little quick update. No, I haven't moved. What I've had to do is, I've just had to swing 
the bivvy or the shelter round because all of a sudden the wind has swung from south round to the west and it's picked up quite a bit so it started uh, filling the shelter up like a parachute so quick quick move spin the bivvy round get it all anchored down and gear moved and I'm back rods haven't moved they're in the same position probably need to do a bait change now it's been a good 10-15 minutes notice a few other people now congregating just over the top from the car park always gets busy up that end sometimes it is worth the extra 10 minute walk just to get away from the crowds so far I've only had two little dabs but it looks like there's another one pinging around on there now and tide's starting to come over that first lip now so hopefully there'll be a bit more tide movement and a few more fish fingers crossed Camouflage probably thinks it's in the uh, Muckleburg collection. Anyway, another one for the bucket. Change rigs and get back out there. So with me being the eternal optimist, I brought the big ruler today, and that's why this is happening. So let's just have a look, size-wise, what we're getting just 23 so that one's in size 19 21 another 21 and another 19 so you can see the sort of average stamp that we're we're dealing with here uh, i'll give them all a little 10 minutes in the bucket i'll now go and release them back into the sea oh something a little bit different on the, the first fish to the pulley panel and that was a whole mini squid I managed to pick up a whitey so it's something different, getting a few bites now. The other rod's going virtually as soon as it goes out with the small baits on. What I'm going to do now is rebait this with another whole squid, get that back out, and I bet I'll make myself a cup of coffee. So the whitey, not normally welcome, but 29 centimetres is in size as well, so that can't be bad. And on the other rod, what I just reeled in, another dab and he might be just in size as well Let me have a check. No, 22 for the dab but keep him busy right a quick little update for you it's just come up to i think it's midday now let's have a quick look 12.04 so probably another hour and a bit to high tide so i probably could have could have set up on that next shelf down but hey ho 
Uh, since the last bit, it's been literally a dab fest. I'm getting ones and twos every time on the small hook rig. And I've even just brought in one on the uh, pulley panel rig with the one o's on, so they're not fussy. If they want that bait, they'll cram it in. Uh, apart from the solitary single whiting, it's been all dabs, but it's pleasurable. A little bit of sea mist coming off there now, and a little bit of spray. Um, it's quite humid, really, to be fair. Several more people down on the beach as you come in by the car park. Uh, one of our club members, Roger's down there. I haven't heard what he's doing yet, but no doubt he'll be getting a few. So I say, yeah, the left hand rod's now going absolutely ballistic again. So I'm going to get that in. I think what I'll do then is refresh the um, pulley pedal bait with another squid and um, sand eel wrap bang that out then I'll make myself a drink have something to eat and give it another bash straight after dinner give you a rough idea it's now just approaching high tide so bearing in mind I'm set up, set up on the second ledge today and it's barely reached the first ledge at the bottom there which is around about I'd say 30 yards from a rod rest now Monday night we had a very similar sized tide and we were set up in the lower bit at first but we gradually got pushed back we ended up on on the higher level here and by 9 p.m approximately an hour before high tide we was getting swamped out by massive waves and that was all due to that northwesterly swell so it's the swell that can make a hell of a difference to the size of the waves on these beaches especially here so in hindsight Today I could have set up down there on that first ledge, just behind. It would have been a little bit easier for getting in and out with the fish and stuff, but safety first. I had anticipated it coming up a lot higher than that. Best to be safe than sorry, I suppose. double shots every time now and they're all they're getting bigger a lot of these are in size now Small lugworm baits, frozen blacks, don't seem to really matter what size baits I put on, it's the same stamp of fish. Pop the hook out of that one. Back 
bucket. A bit of recovery time. Yeah. Some of these are those real strange camouflage ones. But yeah. You certainly won't want to eat one. That's been pleasant. I've got, I've lost count now how many dabs I've had. Just a single solitary white and I've changed the other rod over to a single hook fixed pattern aster. It's about 18 inch pattern aster, the same as it was for the pulley. But for whatever reason, I haven't been I haven't even been seeing bites on the pulley rig today. A couple of times I've reeled in there's been fish on. No bite whatsoever. So I've gone over to the fix just to see if the bite shows up a bit clearer. I don't think it'll make too much difference to be honest. There's not a lot of tide run today. I don't think that helps when you're using like self-hooking rigs. Oh yeah, left down rod basically has only been out there two minutes. It's tapping away already. Just try and need find out how to sort out them slightly better dabs that do turn up and we get me now matches you know 26 27 They're worth catching a lot of these little ones are undersized they don't they don't count you're wasting everything your, your time out in the water the time baiting out everything You can catch 15 of those in a match and not one of them you can. You know, left hand rod again. Look. Right, let's get this rig baited up and then I can get that sorted. Well, it just goes to show that change to that pattern off the rig, I've got a lovely bite and a half decent white in there. Whee! Juggling. So, yeah something worth thinking about that pulley rig wasn't giving me any indication so lesson learned well. I'm certainly right about this wind it's slowly getting stronger and stronger and colder and colder so these dabs are now even taking the 1 0 hooks. There must be millions of them there. And we're now coming up to about quarter past one, so it's gone high tide now. Tides will start falling away. There's not been a great deal of tide pull today. I wonder if that's affected why other species haven't fed. I'm, I'm really surprised having had a dogfish or two. That right hand rod, I've been fishing sand eel baits, cocktails, squid, squid cocktails all day and not found one. So, and yet they do regularly come off of here. Normally when you're pleasure fishing this beach, you cannot get away from them. So. Something's upset them. Might be me. And what I'll probably do now is I'll give it another half an hour while I'm still catching these dabs. Use up the rest of the bait, rest of the worms. Once the worms are all gone, I'll then probably go down to rock one rod. Go down to one rod and then uh, slowly start packing up. I would have think two o'clock time would be about right to go today. An hour and a bit after high tide. You never know here, it only takes one bite.
got the bigger ones. They're getting smaller again. Okay, I think I'm gonna bring this to an end now. Doesn't look like any dogfish are gonna turn up, or maybe the odd smooth hound, which I was hoping for as a bonus. Not today. Grey and murky day now it's turned into. I thought the sun might come out and burn this off, but no. Wind's picked up from the west now. That's starting to put a chop on that, as you can see. That's probably not helped. Dabs have been obliging though all day. I've had God knows how many dabs today. Plenty of bites. Good little workout. So yeah, if you come here, basically the further this way you walk, the more beach you're gonna have to yourself. And if you carry on up to Kelling, it's all the same sort of fishing. Steep shingle beach, don't have to cast out too far. Same species all the way along here. And as the uh, spring ticks on a bit, kicks in towards summer, you should get much more variety of species. Definitely the smooth hounds, bass, dogfish will definitely turn up in numbers. And that'll give you a good day's sport. And don't forget, if you come into that car park and you can't get parked on that left hand side up against the fence, you then have to go in and use the pay and display. Now, if you're going to be here all day long, that's going to be probably around 10 quid, I think it is. But check with the board. You can also check on the apps and stuff like that because you can pay for it on an app. But if a couple of you come, 10 quid for a day's parking is not too bad considering you're straight onto the beach. You don't have to walk too far if you don't want to. There is some facilities with the toilets as well in the uh, car park. So, apart from that, I'm going to wind this one up now. And until next time. Thanks for watching.